this skull is now ready for uh, cutting. We're going to be using a, a jig, a rope skull jig, which you can either get from Bushware or Atterbury accessories, or even even buy them on eBay now. So they're readily available and they make the job a lot easier. Alternatively, you can do it by eye and use an ordinary carpentry saw uh, and judge it by eye. But I find to get a real professional job, a jig is the way to go. Place the skull like so into the jig. And then we're going to get this nice and straight. Like so. And tightening up, getting him nice and straight and relatively tight. Don't over tighten him or you may crush parts of the eye socket and the nose bones. But uh, this is about as straight as it will go. And then all we have to do now is make sure that's nice and tight there. Open them up and down the sides here you can see we've got this the saw guide just make sure the saw guide is even each side which it's not so what we do is just loosen off these little fly nuts just make sure that we line up where we want to cut down below the eye socket missing the teeth and down through the length of the nose. That one's in the right position. I'll just line up this side, make sure it's in the right position. And to make saw, we just bring our little saw and we just check down through, make sure Right, just steady, get a nice steady area, get it nice and steady. Uh, Black and Decker work makes good for this if you can grab the, the base of this and keep it steady or alternatively going down onto the grass and keep it nice and steady. But gently cut, cut into the skull nice and gently. Nice straight cut, and we're ready, almost ready for boiling out. Given the brain from the uh, brain cavity of the skull, like so. Straighten it round. That's it. All the brain removed. from the brain cavity in the skull. And there, we have the head ready now for boiling. Now we're cooking now, and uh, what I'm actually doing is boiling a kettle of water first, just to speed up the process. Uh, you don't have to, just put it on the gas, and uh, just wait till it boils normally. But I find if you boil a kettle, and another kettle afterwards, and then bring it to the right level, it speeds the process up a lot quicker. Also, if your wife's not stalker friendly like my wife is, uh, do it out in the garden. Use a camp stove or a garden shed out the way so nobody can see what you're doing or have any nasty smells. But by the way, if the skull is nice and fresh like this, uh, you, you don't have any smells really. It's no different than you boiling uh, bones for your dog or boiling some mince up for your dinner. What we've got now, uh, the head isn't sitting straight in the pan, so what I've done is utilise uh, what is actually a kitchen knife. And what I've done is I'm just going to adjust this skull so it's sitting straight in the pan. And I'm just going to do the final top up.
And what we're aiming to do is just bring the level of the water, the level of the water just below the coronets. At this stage, you can add some uh, washing soda crystals, about two ta teaspoons or a tablespoon full, or some people use dishwasher tablets, uh, half a dishwasher tablet, or a little ba ba bit of biological soap powder uh, will do the trick. But it's not necessary. Ordinary boiling water will do the, just the same. So uh, remember to keep this as the water evaporates. Just keep topping it up to the right level. Don't let the water go down too, uh, too low or else the uh, top of the pedicle, the meat around the top of the pedicle won't cook and you'll find it difficult to uh, free it all. Hello. This head's been boiling now for about 20 minutes. Uh, this is a young animal so about 20 minutes is around about enough. The way to test if it's uh, ready or not is to take a section of the head and if it's readily scraped away like so, you're about ready to go with the scraping process. The scraping process, this head's been in for about 20 minutes or so. You can see we have scraped it away just to check whether it's ready to scrape. So it's just a matter of now, is it's just scraping all the skin away from this, this, the surface of the skull. Getting around the eye sockets and such like can be a bit fiddly. Just make sure you get it right. A blunt knife like so is the tool to use for this. Around the nose area, just take your time so you don't actually break any nose bones in the process. Take your time, just make sure you get all the meat off the bone, off the skull. We've come to a slightly trickier bit, it's uh, starting to remove all the uh, sinews and gristle from the nasal cavity. So. Just get our little knife in, just pick away very gently so we don't actually break any of the nasal bones or any of the skull around the, the nose. Just poke around inside, just clean it out as much as you can. Just get the nasal tissue out from the skull from the top here. Pull it all free, see it all coming out. We need to remove all this because coming in the day it's all fat and gristle and we need to be removed. If you find on a hot day like this, just uh, you've got your warm water from the uh, pan here, just give it a little, just dip it in there for a little while, just uh, loosen the skin up again because in this weather it's drying quite quickly and it, you'll find it hard to remove. And uh, I think uh, this is going to do us. Now the next stage I like to do is uh, just run it under the cold water tap or a warm, warm water tap with a, and scrub it with a nail brush and a little bit of washing up liquid or uh, biological soap powder just to get an extra little bit of grease off. Just applying a bit of washing washing up powder, it just takes that extra little bit of grease in all the little nooks and crannies. This is where this deer hasn't really been left out in water overnight. It's uh, got a little bit of blood staining into the skull but it's not too bad so should, we should be able to get that out with, uh, with the peroxide. It's going to be left for any more than a, uh, a day or a day or so. I would leave it in water because, as, as happens, this is what you see on here is actually blood getting into the bone. 
and it can be a bit difficult to get out at times. On the bottom of the uh, coronets, a few, few airs that's left on there, and then we're good to go.